Hello everyone and welcome back! In the last few lessons we have set up our MongoDB database and we have populated it with some data that we will be displaying here on the screen. So the data is coming from this DB data file that contains here some test data with courses and lessons. Now in our courses controller, instead of fetching our data directly from the test file, we are now going to query the MongoDB database. Now we could do this using the MongoDB package that you already have installed. So this is the MongoDB official driver package that allows us to query the database. Now instead of using the MongoDB package directly, we are going to use a more convenient API. We are going to be using Mongoose that you can see at mongoosejs.com. So this is an object modeling package for MongoDB and Node. So what does this do exactly? This is a way of interacting with MongoDB that is closer to what you are used to if you have been using something such as, for example, an ORM or an Object Relational Mapping Library. So this is the equivalent but for MongoDB. So MongoDB is not a relational database, instead it's a document database. So the documents that we have here in our collections don't have a fixed structure unlike typical SQL tables. So if I edit here a document, I could potentially add here a new field that is not any of these fields here. So let's create here a new field called test field and let's fill it in with some data. So as we can see, if we click now on update, this particular document in the MongoDB database has a field that no other document contains. So the MongoDB database is schemaless. There is nothing at the level of the database itself ensuring that a given collection only has documents with a certain predefined number of fields. So this has advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages compared to SQL databases is that we will never run into the problem of having to bring our production database down in order to run, for example, an alter colon statement to add a new column that in a table with, let's say, 70 or 100 million records could take several hours. With the MongoDB database, this will never happen. On the other hand, there is the trade-off that potentially our program could insert data into the database that is unintended, for example, due to a bug. So let's edit here again this field and let's remove this test field. This is actually quite important. If you don't do this, your program might crash later on because we are going to be adding some schema-like capability on the client by using the mongoose library. So the mongoose library is going to allow us to write our program, ensuring that objects belonging to a certain category, such as for example courses or lessons, always follow a given schema. So we can get some sort of equivalent schema functionality, but on the client that is querying the database and not on the database itself. Now implementing this on the client does not ensure the security of the data, but it's a great way for avoiding that unintended bugs corrupt our database. So let's have a look here at the mongoose API. When we initialize here the mongoose package, we need to pass it a connection string. As you can see, it's a promise-based API and we can use it for defining data models. For example, here we are defining the cat model, which only has one field, which is a string. So as you can see, we can be very specific. We can say that this field has this given name and this given type and that the cat model only has this field called name and no other fields. This means that if we would try to use the cat model to create here a cat that has any other field besides the name, let's say that we would try to add here a second field called age, this would not be possible. Mongoose would throw us an error here in this code line. Now, Mongoose also follows the active record pattern. So we can edit here our kitty variable by changing, for example, the name. And when we are ready to save this back to the database, we can call the dot save method, which will return as a promise that will be successfully evaluated whenever the data has been saved to the database. Mongoose also supports relations between columns, such as one to many relations. So it's a very good tool to have in order to interact with the MongoDB database without using its low-level API provided by the MongoDB package. So in our program, we are going to be accessing our database always with the Mongoose 
Object Modeling Library. In your local workspace, you have already installed Mongoose at the beginning of the course, so everything is ready to go. Let's now learn how can we use Mongoose to define the schema of the course entity.